Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic. Before we dive into today's video, don't forget about our big 5,000 subscriber giveaway of a full Marin of Clan Nell Toth deck. Click the card up top to find out how to enter. Today's quick brew in the workshop is an interesting build around a new legend out of the Adventures in the Forgotten Realms precon, it's Wolfgar of Icewind Dale. This 5 mana gruel human barbarian is a 4 4 that has melee, an ability rarely seen but first featured in the Conspiracy set. When Wolfgar attacks, he gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each opponent you attacked. Meaning, if you spread out your attacks in a game of Commander, each turn Wolfgar can be getting plus three plus three. However, the juiciest line of text is his next. If a creature you control attacking would cause a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, it happens an additional time. Meaning, Wolfgar can give himself plus one plus one for each opponent you attacked twice. So he can be attacking as a 10-10 right away. This gives us some really interesting toys to play with, from massive on attack triggers like Pathbreaker Ibex to fun ones like Atali Primal Storm. We can easily put together a fast, stompy aggro deck that can rush in and start doing some really degenerate things, right up my alley. The first aspect of the deck I want to take care of is mana. We're going to be fine without Wolfgar in play. This is one of those rare decks where the commander adds to our game plan but isn't essential to it. But we're going to want to make sure we can reach some of our higher costs on some of those big attackers. Since we're in green, it means we can include mana dorks. If they become less useful, we can attack with them to trigger effects. And we can include some ramp. Because our curve is closer to 4 than it is to 3, I've included Cultivate and Kodama's Reach in the list. Being able to go turn 1 Mana Dork, turn 2 Cultivate is going to be powerful enough to get us a turn 3 Commander. Before we look at what creatures I'd include, let's look at our nuts and bolts. I've included some classic removal like Chaos Warp and Beast Within, along with board wipes like Chain Reaction. If all goes well, some of our creatures can even survive all of that damage. We can deal with artifacts and enchantments very cleanly, with Return to Nature and Hull Breach as well. Creatures are a little more difficult to deal with. We do have things like Kenris Transformation, but we're really hoping attackers will deal with opponents' creatures. Our card draw is going to be creature-based as well. We're going to have some big beefy boys on the attack, so Return of the Wild Speaker is going to be one of our biggest, most explosive draw spells. Draw engines will be in the form of enchantments. Elemental Bond, Garrick's Uprising, and Overwhelming Instinct. Instinct also triggers twice thanks to Wolfgar, meaning it alone can be drawing us two cards per turn in most instances. Now obviously we're going to be very creature heavy in this brew, and we have 30 creatures in the list, one third of our deck being able to attack. I've tried to fit as many creatures with on attack triggers as I could in here while keeping the budget reasonable. Ranging from plus one plus one counters like Fangren Firstborn and Rubble Belt Raiders through to high power attackers like Coastline Marauders. Getting plus two plus zero for each land you control makes for a big attacker fast, and this one has Trample innately. We have some utility creatures like Deathgorger Scavenger in the list, which can act as graveyard removal on attack. Our own pseudo scavenging ooze, if you will. We also have the new Vengeful Ancestor, which goads creatures on attack. Powerful for both offensive and defensive reasons, especially if we get to goad two of the most powerful creatures our opponents control to attack each other every turn. And I've put Territorial Kavu in the list. While he's only going to be a 2-2 thanks to our mana base, he'll still get us a looting effect on attack. With Wolfgar out, he's a faithless looting every turn. And we've got some real heavy hitters in the list as well, like Kogla the Titan Ape, who can destroy two artifacts or enchantments every turn and can help save Wolfgar if needed. Krenko Tin Street Kingpin, which can net us more and more goblins on attack, and Dracuseth Maw of Flame, who can basically be a board wipe on attack or deal some damage directly to our opponents. Our big finishers are going to be creatures that pump all of our other creatures on attack. Keeping conservative, I've included three in the list. Blossoming Bog Beast, Wild Beastmaster, and Cultivator of Blades. These can trigger twice with Wolfgar out, seeing their first pump, but can also see each other's pump. 
If you stack your triggers right, you can even be giving your other creatures plus 20, plus 20 on every attack. That makes even a Lano or Elf a big threat. Now we also have some effects that can turn regular creatures into big threats. Equipment like Trepanation Blade and Mage Slayer can spell the end for an opponent, even without Wolfgar in play, but better with him in play. Milling, pumping, and dealing damage before combat is even over. And maybe the best card in the deck, recently reprinted and more affordable than ever, is Gratuitous Violence. This 3 red pip enchantment comes reprinted in the same precon as Wolfgar, and is down to less than a dollar from the 6 or 7 that it was. For a deck that wants to turn sideways as much as possible, this is a must have. It's an asymmetrical effect and it doesn't just double combat damage, it doubles any damage done by creatures. So if you're including it in this deck, or any deck that has creatures triggering to deal damage, this gratuitous violence is a must have. As I love to say, choose violence. Now if I were to upgrade this deck, I'd first look at extra combat spells. Aggravated Assault or Combat Celebrant would both allow us to attack again on the regular, getting double the doubled triggers. Along those same lines, Scourge of the Throne would make a great addition. Not only does Dethrone trigger twice, but the extra combat that you get from that would trigger twice as well. Let me know what you think about this swingy, stompy brew in the comments below, and be sure to check out the full deck list in the description. I kept the budget very modest, below $100, and there is a lot of room to upgrade, tweak, customize, and improve this for you. And don't forget to check out our big full deck giveaway of a Marin of Clan Nell Toth deck. I want to thank everybody for getting us to 5,000 subscribers on the channel, and there is not going to be any stopping us anytime soon. As always, folks, good luck and have fun.